Oh, hello. Uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, today's date, it's March 27th of 2020. And it's uh, about 8.30 p.m. Um, I've got links to, like, my YouTube start page. I'm beginning to think what I should do is not have it go to the start page. Have it go to this page. It's uh, slash videos. And there's all, you know, they're all, seems to me like this is maybe a better, because there's some things about the start page. Well, one, nobody go. well, some people go to it. But, uh, I think this might look better. I, I mean, might be a better, easier way. Uh, uh, let's see, yesterday was my birthday. I was 79 years old. And yesterday I started uh, walking. Uh, I, twice I went outside, which is unusual. <laughs> and I know people have been telling me, you all have been, a lot of you have been telling me, walk, you know. And, of course, you're also telling me, uh, you know, don't drink cola and stuff like that. But that is Coke Zero, you know. But uh, so yesterday I went outside and, and I did, you know, <laughs> I didn't go for a, I just walked around the parking lot out there twice during the day. Well, not actually during the day because I'm up. I, I usually get a two or three, sometimes a two hour, sometimes a one, I mean, I, because of my medical conditions or whatever, so, anyway, I walked around twice, um, and I walked around twice today, um, I've been thinking for a long time, I, th I think I may have mentioned it, uh, about getting a stationary bicycle, and, putting it, of course, in this room, and then ride that, because I I have, uh, when I go out and just walk around a parking lot, I have to be very careful when I step off the curb that I don't fall, and also just walking, I have to be, I stagger sometimes, I do not drink at all, but I stagger sometimes, and, uh, and a, a lot of people are saying, just go walk, you know. Uh, kind of, uh, I've fallen a couple of times. Not here, I don't believe. Once in the street. Uh, Camp Boy Boulevard or whatever. Uh, so I'm thinking, you know, um, set the bike up someplace. Stationary bike. And uh, ride it. I don't have my TV set up, but, <coughs> excuse me, I do not have the virus. Uh, uh, and I'm thinking, you know, okay, if I'm on the stationary bike, I'm probably not going to fall off of it. If I do fall off, I'm going to be on the floor. Maybe I could put it next to my bed and fall on my bed. Uh, and I'm thinking, there's, there's, I'm, I've gotten where I don't even like, I watch YouTube videos. I really don't watch. Uh, I don't know. Just something about you know television and movies and whatever. I just I guess I've lived long enough that seen it and uh, not interested in the foolishness. I guess. Um, but that kind of worries me. My uh, mother. Uh, Spent last years of her life just watching television and drinking highballs and, uh, you know, eating. And she got Alzheimer's, but we were lucky. And I was, I was lucky in a couple of ways. One, she was never, well, that's like me too. She lived, in a, she lived in a mobile home. Well, this is not a mobile home, but she lived in a mobile home. And she never tried to go anywhere, never tried to go anywhere. So when she got Alzheimer's, 
We never had to worry about her leaving or getting out in the street or anything. She just didn't do it. But uh, the first time I really realized there was some problems, maybe I wasn't paying as much attention as I should. You know, I go check on her occasionally. Uh, I went over and she didn't have the television set on. And uh, she wouldn't watch the television set. And she said that Mrs. Reagan, the president's wife, was talking to her and saying bad things to her, and it scared her. And then that was like, uh, what's going on here? And uh, why did I get on this subject? I think I had a reason, and now I've forgotten what the reason is. Well, anyway. Uh, and by the way, I had my DNA done, and I have the marker for, that doesn't mean I'm going to get Alzheimer's, but, you know, my mother had it, and I do have the marker, which does not mean you're going to get it, but, uh, you know, so, uh, anyway, I've been walking around the parking lot, and I, and I'm going to try to keep doing it. But I really think the stationary bicycle, and I've had a friend, well, a couple of friends, well, one friend, I guess, said, you're not going to use that, you know. And he knows me well enough, he knows, uh, what about that, and what about things that I've purchased something or said I was going to do or, you know, whatever, and, you know. And now I mentioned it to my cardiologist, well, my regular doctor and then my cardiologist, and I mentioned to both. I can't remember what the regular doctor said, didn't seem too enthused, you know, the cardiologist was, nah, that's not going to work, uh, what you need to do is get a trainer, personal trainer, and I thought, can't he look at me and see that I'm, <laughs> that I'm poor, and then he said, uh, uh, get a club, you know, you get a membership, in a, and I, I said, well, I did that a couple of times, and I never went. I, I paid and never went, and I said, I think I need a, you know, he, you know uh, so I'm going to, I think, get a, at some point, stationary bicycle, and then set, have some type of a schedule, um, some TV show that I uh, like, news or something like that, and just during that song, you know, watch it, and that's going to be it, so, but I should still walk, I think. Um, we're doing okay here, um, and I really like that I paid for the Walmart $13 a month, and because one of my, one of our excuses, well, my excuses, for not having vegetables and fruit and that type of stuff is it doesn't keep long enough. Uh, and now, after paying that thirteen dollars, like I ordered twice in one week from Amazon or from uh, Walmart with their and they don't charge for it because I'm paying thirteen dollars a month. Of course, I always tip also, you know, the person that brings it out, but. Uh, that's a way to get, like, some fresh, you know, have it delivered, you know. And and I've been ordering uh, the salad-type things that, uh, you know, you have your lettuce, and then it comes with this dressing. I know you're not supposed to, and I love the dressing, you know, different kinds of dressing. But, you know, it has the chicken in it and has the cheese, and you dump it in or whatever, and... Uh, I'm thinking, you know, once a week, maybe, or maybe I could make it every two weeks. I don't know. Order. Well, of course, they have a limit. Now. You, like, you can only order two of the uh, salads, and then you have to order two of another kind of salad and that type of thing. Uh, so I'm going to try to eat a little better. I mean, I know it's too late. I mean, I'm 79. I mean, I should have started this when I was 40. Probably, I guess, before I was 40. 
Uh, but I was in good shape. I was until I was. I never had any real medical problems until I was like about sixty-five. And the few little times that something came up, and I'd give my medical information, and they, you know, the nurse or the clerk or whoever was taking it. You, you haven't had any operations, no. You know, you've never been hospitalized, no. You haven't had any surgeries, no. You know. Uh, now that when I give my information, it's like you know. But uh, so I'm going to try to do a little bit better. I know it's too late, but. Um, okay. I don't know. Oh. No, oh, I was going to. Yeah, I. Uh, I don't know if I'm out. This has been this has been going on for forever. I think. I uh, I don't have a cold. I don't have a fever. It was just my nose runs from time to time too often. We do have a cat. I may be allergic to the cat. Everybody else in the family is allergic to the cat. I think. Um. Oh. For years, I just been. I can't remember the last time I went to a, uh, you know, to a barber. Uh, I just cut my hair with clippers, you know, electric clippers. And I've had the same electric clippers for a long. They they broke for some reason. They don't know why. But that's okay. They didn't cost very much. <clears throat> but in the past, when I uh, would use the clippers, uh. I mentioned, I think, this yesterday, I believe. You know, the cord had to be plugged in. The cord would knock something into the sink and, uh, you know, whatever. Of course, I don't have water in the... But anyway, I don't like the cord going down into, you know. So I uh, I ordered from Amazon uh, Clippers. I think they'll be here Monday. And uh, I got a rechart, you know, battery uh, on a battery operated. And I think that's going to be cuz that be going over my head and the cables pulling, I mean it. So anyway, I got those that coming. So anyway, when I was went to Amazon just ordering the clippers, I thought I'm going to check again cuz I mentioned the other day that I ordered something from Amazon. And they had uh, toilet paper. I'm talking. About, I'm not talking about Amazon grocery store. I'm talking about you know, Amazon Prime or whatever. And they had toilet paper. So I clicked. It went to, when it went to the, uh, you know, the uh, checkout. It said uh, May sometime in May that would be shipping. So okay, well you know. So I went there again, and I tried a different uh, toilet paper, clicked on that, and went to the checkout, of course, and it, I left it on the thing, but it was also sometime in May that it's going to come. I mean, whenever it comes, that'll be okay. Um, I saw something on CNN the other day uh, the FBI shot a man to death in in Belton I think at the Belton hospital uh, he was a terrorist and he was intending to <laughs> I, I spent 10 years or 11 I think I can't remember now uh, 10 or 11 years working at this small hospital uh, in Belton, Missouri. It was called Research Belton Hospital then, but I, it's been taken over by health, by uh, hospital associate, I forget, you know, one of those for profit. But I uh, worked at the hospital. Basically, I was the only, with, there was, I'm not going to go into staffing. Um, so anyway, um, 
This, I mean, it's a, it, well, it may have grown a little bit, but it was a small hospital. And it's still a small hospital, I'm sure. Might have grown a little bit, added a few more beds or whatever, but there's some terrorist, you know, domestic terrorist, who uh, apparently, reading between the lines, objected to uh, virus patients being treated or uh, thought that that's all fake or something, I don't know, uh, decided to blow up that hospital. And I guess when he went looking for explosives and that type of stuff, I guess the uh, FBI hooked up with him and said, hey, buddy, we, you know, we can help you. And uh, so anyway, a small hospital that I uh, worked at, well, let's let me say, I, there was, well, um, he was a potential violent extremist they were executing a warrant Tuesday in, uh, let's see, 100 block of Wilbur Parish Circle. That would be in uh, Raymore, Missouri, and that's where I was a reserve officer for and patrolled once a week for 10 years or more. Uh, they shot and killed him. He believed that Wilson believed he was picking up a bomb, which didn't actually exist, of course. Uh, small world. I can, I can remember when, uh, well, we had a bomb threat there once when I was working. And I was the only officer working, of course. And... Uh, The bomb plan set up for the hospital or whatever was, you know, they had a 500-bed hospital. And what they did when they built this other hospital is they took the disaster emergency plan or whatever, and they just took it out to this hospital that had 40 beds. And they said, okay, here's the plan. And then, of course, I was sent out there the first officer, oh, they had a couple officers, they had a few officers out there for a little bit until they were getting everything ready to go and then I went out there. And uh, so I went out there and then I, you know, started doing my thing and then I got the disaster plan and I said, oh, this is interesting. And I could see what they had done, you know. Oh, okay, now there's one officer working. That's all they have, you know. Okay, it says here when an emergency, you know, disaster plan A or whatever happens that one security officer will go to the front door, one security officer will go to the control center where the hospital administrator is and all the department heads are, one security officer, and one security officer will go to the emergency room and once, you know, that was fine when I worked at the main hospital where we had like seven security officers on duty. <laughs> and then... I saw their uh, disaster plan for a radiological problem of some sort. That doesn't need, mean, you know, nuclear war. It means it could be a uh, transport truck carrying radioactive waste or material or something, you know, crashes or whatever. So, but anyway, they have, so a, when that happens, a security officer will go to the radiology department and get the Geiger counter and take it to the emergency room. So, interestingly enough, I was trained by, when I was like in high school or just out of high school, trained by the state of Missouri to be a radiological monitor for when the nuclear war happened. I would be the guy, I was trained on the Geiger counter and went over, of course we only had like the one day of training, I think went to KU or uh, UMKC, University of Missouri, Kansas City, and professors taught us, you know. But anyway, I thought, oh, okay. Of course, I knew what was, you know, <laughs> I knew what was. So, uh, and of course, when I would take the Geiger counter to the emergency room, 
the head of uh, radiology, you know, the doctor in charge of the radiology department or whatever would be the one who would handle the Geiger counter. I doubt he knew anything about it, but it didn't matter anyway because he was down at the main hospital. But anyway, so I went, just for the, I went over to the radiology department. I said, uh, I'd like to check and see where you have the Geiger counter. Uh, what Geiger counter? I said, in the disaster plan. We don't have any Geiger counter, you know. <sighs> Uh, for the first five years I worked at the main hospital, we had, when I was working there, we had a director of security who, unbelievably bad. I mean, I just can't comprehend how bad this guy was. He, he covered up information to make sure administration didn't find out. He didn't even tell security, tell the officers or, I mean, it just everything, it just could not have been worse. But then we got a new, as soon as I transferred to this other hospital, we got a new director of security. And he was really great. Everybody, all the other security officers thought that I hated him or did not like him. I actually, he, he was great. I think he thought I didn't like him because I stood up to him and told him, you know, things. And I disagreed with him. And uh, the other security officers didn't disagree with the old director of security, and they didn't disagree with the new. They didn't agree. They didn't disagree with you know. But so, but anyway, um, when the new director of security came on, he started improving things tremendously, and he no no longer was information kept secret. I mean, he just and he uh, made tremendous improvements. But he was a little bit arrogant because uh, he thought that he knew more. You know, there were like 25 security officers working for him. Many of them had been working. Well, I started, well, I'd worked security at multiple hospitals for years before I came to work there. And anyway, um, but he... Uh, you know, he just did not appreciate, you know, uh, he just thought he knew more than everybody else. And uh, so anyway, I got a call from uh, security. Like when I worked at this small hospital, that's where I worked, you know. So I got a call from a supervisor. It was a really good supervisor there, security supervisor. And he said, oh, Jim, by the way, uh, he said the director of security's name, but he said uh, the director of security is going to uh, make up a fake bomb, and it'll be a fake bomb. It'll have a note on it or whatever, and it it may end up being taken out, you know, to your hospital. It may appear out there. You won't know where it is. Then when you're making your rounds, that you will discover it or whatever. And I said, uh, I don't think you better do that, and I think you better pass the word on to the, you know director, of course I said his name, to the director of security, that if when I'm making my rounds, I find, even though it'll be an obvious, you know, fake bomb so we can go through, you know, I said, uh, I'm not going to handle it like it's a fake bomb. I'm going to notify the fire department and the police department and have them respond. And uh, I think that they will be wanting to have some words with the director of security. So that was the last of, uh, I think he not only gave up of putting a fake bomb at our hosp at that hospital, but uh, I don't think he put it at the big place either. Uh, I guess I'll put the links to this in case you're interested in it. Uh, Anyway, so at that hospital, I, I had, there was uh, one time a, okay, yeah, at like 4 a.m. in the morning, uh, there was a, a phone call that came in, and that, that was a small hospital. The nurses on the second floor, the switchboard operator, like, went home at midnight, and so from midnight, you know, to like 6 in the morning, there was no switchboard operator. Then poor nurses who, and they did... I forget what they called it. All the hospitals did that. 
you know, they, okay, how many patients do we have? Okay, well, then the nurses on this unit, they can get by with, you know, two nurses. Okay, over here, we're going to need three. And, they, you know, the, the hospital supervisor, the nursing supervisor who would be on duty, you know, she would have to figure this out and then tell, call some nurses, say, no, don't come in today. And then she'd have to call maybe an agency or call, you know, come in. And it was just, so you could have had like two nurses working up on this floor with 20 patients or 15 or whatever. And uh, they had to answer the phone when the phone rang, unless somebody dialed directly to the emergency room. If a call came into the hospital, it went up there, and the nurses had to come over and answer the. Anyway, somebody called in with a bomb threat, and uh, the nurse handled it perfectly. You know, she asked, you know, where the bomb was located, uh, when is it supposed to go off, and the person said it's in the emergency room and it's supposed to go off in, uh, you know, 15 minutes or whatever fantastic so then you know the person that hang up with so then she calls me okay I've been in the emergency room for that was a busy night but then there was nobody there except a, a Belton police officer and myself so you know he said oh we'll call the and I said no I said uh, we'll take care of it so we took care of it and uh, but Uh, I, um, I can hear our cat crying. It must be close time to eat. Anyway, um, man shot and killed by FBI agents in Belton was a suspect. Let's see. Okay, that's not the Belton Hospital. That must be where he lives or lived. Breaking tonight, we're learning more about a man who died after a confrontation with an FBI agent. His name is Timothy Wilson. He's 36 years old. And the FBI believes he planned to target a local hospital with a car bomb. Well, the FBI, though, caught up with him near Wilbur Parish Circle in Belton to make an arrest. KCTV5's Nathan Vickers is live now to tell us what happened then. Nathan. Well, the FBI says they were waiting for him when he stopped somewhere on this street to pick up yeah, I don't think that was uh, a belt address. I think that was a Raymore address. When CNN had the story, by the way, <laughs> uh, on their page, they had a map there. And <laughs> they spelled Belton wrong. You know, they were showing the city of Belton, and they spelled it wrong on the map. Uh, let's see here. Aquarium closed due to the corona, coronavirus. That must be the one at uh, Union Station. Uh, no, it says the Georgia Aquarium is closed. FBI agents say the man shot and killed by agents yesterday in Belton wanted to blow up an area hospital. 36-year-old Timothy Wilson was being tracked as part of a months-long domestic terrorism probe. He was accused of planning to car bomb an area hospital because of the COVID-19 crisis. Agents are not saying which hospital. The shooting happened near a storage facility west of I-49 off Wilbur Parish Circle. He was armed when he went to pick up what he thought was that bomb. Well, he lived in Raymore, and uh, I think they said a hospital. Ouch. Thanks they said a hospital. Wilson was motivated by racial, religious, and anti government view. You know, again, why blow up a hospital? Oh. Uh. You know, and we had to give a little bit of training to hospital at all the hospitals 
on what to do and when there's a you know bomb threat you know bomb threats or whatever and by that nurse there at research belton hospital by she handled it just perfect just the way she was trained to do by asking those questions and if, if she could have got more information you know that would have helped i mean that was fine she did perfect you know uh Anyway, I've, if you noticed, I moved the camera, and I installed a uh, very bright light up here above. I don't have it on, though, because it, let me pull this up here again. Looks like this is working. Oh, I also mentioned that I, I'm thinking about getting a new, I was thinking about getting a iPad, you know, the like the one that's $400, which is, half the price of the the better one that would be fine and uh but i you know i have a 10 well, i don't I, I don't i have a one of those amazon ones i don't use whatever it is i'm not sure how big it is uh i think i'm i mentioned the other day i think a new cell phone pixel is what I think I will get because I take that everywhere that I go with me and it just happens you know it's an economy price middle range or whatever but they did not skimp on the camera situation you know they didn't make it out of aluminum or stainless steel or a titanium and they didn't put the fastest, best processor in it. And they didn't make it waterproof. And a bunch of things. But it's a Google Pixel. So it has the standard Google stuff. And doesn't have any of that crap thrown in by every uh, whoever you have your phone with, you know, that wants to. Uh, and... Uh, they did not skimp in the area of uh, the camera. In fact, the camera is as good as uh, the thousand-dollar camera. So I can't afford a thousand-dollar camera, or I mean a thousand-dollar cell phone. Uh, I'm not sure, by the way, if I should add that onto the back of here. I think I will. I out walking around the last couple of days. I uh, made. Uh, some little videos or whatever. And I think I've got some pictures, I think. So at the end of this video, you can just stop, you know, uh, unless you want to watch me walking around the parking lot or something. So um, at some point, I guess, when I do get the new cell phone, I will do a review on it, but I have seen fantastic YouTube reviews of that cell phone and comparisons between the other phones you know in the same and that type of stuff and but i'll just give you for my perspective of uh you know how it works out for me had somebody ask uh the uh whatever cell phone service i'm working the links is below and it's working out okay for me. I don't use my cell phone. Well, I have my cell phone. I control the lights and uh, that type of stuff. And But I don't watch videos and blah, 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 blah. And when I'm here, of course, I use Wi-Fi. And I only use the uh, cell phone part, you know, when I'm out of Wi-Fi range. So the cell phone service is working fine for me. Uh, I think that's, I think that's it. I'm sure I'm going to think of something else because I got it rattling around in my head. I like, I'm just going to quickly mention that one of the places that I was offered a job, Johnson County community as security officer, Johnson County community college, eh, many, many, many years later, they had uh, a few years ago. They had a, a shootout there. Somebody came in and uh, did a shoot, you know, did a shootout or whatever. Um, 
trying to think of, oh, well, in the beginning when I did security, hospital security, in the first few years or whatever, I also worked contract guard security just for extra income. So it was a second job. And I got I got sent to Unity Village. You know, you've heard of the Unity Church. Unity Village out in right next to Lee Summit. I was sent out there to be a Unity Village police officer. I was working for Pinkerton. <laughs> and I went out there and there was, they had two, I'm out of focus here. Um. Uh, Why are we out of focus? Well, I look better out of focus. Let me just finish my story and get back out of here. Um, let me turn the light on. Not the big light because I don't have it. I uh, don't have an adapter for it. Okay. Okay. I could just tell, you know. There we go. Maybe that helps. Anyway, uh, Pinkerton sent me out there. And anyway, they used their own police officer, Univillage police officer, for the day shift. And then they had one Univillage police officer inside the place where they receive donations. And then the other person, they used a Pinkerton security uh, guard. And so I went out there. Was I didn't work there very long because the guy who was working that uh, he was working at overtime, and they kept sending people out, and he kept saying they weren't any good or they didn't whatever. So I went out there, and I didn't work very long because when I got there, he when he was supposed to be orientating me, he had me in a car, and then when he was around, he wouldn't tell me anything. I had to directly ask questions, and then when he would come some up someplace you know he'd get out of the car and go talk to somebody and I, I could hear the person saying uh, who's the uh, is that your replacement is that you know no no he's nobody don't pay any I mean you know and then eventually uh, I uh, I mean eventually I was patrolling it by myself uh, and uh, he worked five days a week and I was working two days a week but uh, eventually I got a call from Pinkerton said, uh, we, we don't need you out there anymore. So I'm sure he uh, reported because he wanted to work seven days a week. And I think maybe he was hoping that uh, they would hire him as a, you know, but, oh, but anyway, right after I was no longer working there, I mean, you know, the Unity Village, you know, small, whatever. Um, this guy who was, he was retired Navy Bolson's made, or I can't remember what he was, something. Uh, so he was back. It was. I'm not sure if that would have been my night to work or not. So it was better that he was working because he knew everything about the, you know. But he noticed a car parked by the plant operations building or something. So the car took off, and he went. He took off and tried to stop it. You know, of course, that car, you know, it was a police car. You had, even though Pinkerton, you know, red lights and siren or whatever. And uh, the car ran off the road eventually. And uh, I think the guy was slightly injured, the driver. But then the uh, highway patrol or whoever came to assist with the thing. Anyway, they found a gun there. Anyway, the uh, security officer went back and checked the uh, where the guy was parked and found a guy dead, the, the guy who was manager of the plant operations department or something. And I can't remember the, the details. Uh, either this guy got the job and this other guy uh, wanted that job or he didn't get hired or something, and so he killed that guy, so small world. Anyway, am I going to add something? I don't know. If you see it, you see it. If not, okay. Thank you very much for watching.